is it worth it to buy a full TOS exhaust system? Let's go for a ride and find out. So I figured I'd try out a little bit of moto vlogging. I've got it, uh, I went and got a purple panda mic. We're gonna try that out. This is my first attempt really using it. So hopefully it goes, you know, well. But I wanted to talk about the Toast exhaust. So I run a full Toast exhaust system on my 2009 CBR600. Uh, it was about $1,500 all said and told. That included an ECU flash, and I went with a high flow filter for it as well, um, which they recommend for their ECU flash and everything like that, which is fine. It's just an oil filter, so make sure that you maintenance it properly, which is kind of a pain in the ass on this bike, having to take you know the tank cowl off and get to it. So I think it was about 1,500 bucks uh, to my door. I ordered it straight through Toast and it took a couple weeks to get here. It wasn't too bad. I've run it for over a year now. And I want to talk about the things I like about it and the things I don't like about it. And whether it's a good deal or something that you should even run on the streets. Now it does delete uh, the resonator and the cap. So that's going to make it illegal in uh, pretty much every state as far as I know. Uh, I guess states that don't have inspections or admissions, you're all set. We do have inspections in New Hampshire. I used to have a mount through TST, or uh, yeah, I think it was TST, that tucked my plate pretty, pretty far up, just because that was the only mount that was available at the time. And uh, I got a lot of people uh, that were a little bit more interested in me because of the plate being tucked. I don't run. I, <laughs> It's not worth it to me. I've got kids, you know, like, I don't know. I, it just, I, I don't run. It's just that, it's that simple. Um, so I had a couple of cops take interest in me on that, but then I ended up getting the uh, plate holder that attaches right to the exhaust and displays it very nice and prominently in the back. And since then I haven't had any issues. But the Toast exhaust system uh, definitely draws some attention. Uh, I did some decibel, uh, testing earlier at 50 feet at idle at uh, on the seat at idle and then revving it out just to see kind of where we're at and what uh, you know how loud this thing really is so just how loud is the tow system let's find out I have a little decibel meter on my phone we're at 50 feet from the bike Seventy decibels, not too bad. I'm talking and it's going up. High sixties, low seventies, at idle, at uh, at fifty feet. Let's see what it's at at the seat. Okay, at the seat. Let's see what we get. About eighty, give or take, eighty decibel. Let's see what happens when we hit the throttle. Maxed out at 104. Now let's give it a little bit more. 110. 110 decibels at the seat uh, when you hit, you know, 14, 15,000 RPM. That's, that's pretty loud. That's really loud. It sounds phenomenal. The sound this thing gives is great. It deepens up the 600 a lot, but it still sounds like a 600. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It still has that, the CBR kind of ring to it, but it's just a deeper tone. Um, it's light compared to my stock exhaust. I think I saved 10 pounds. Um, which I love saving weight on this thing. I've tried to strip as much weight out of it as I can. So that was a huge plus side for me of the, the full exhaust rather than just uh, a slip-on. However, 
you know, obviously it was considerably more money. Um, but they also said, if you're going with the full exhaust, you need a tube, which makes perfect sense. It's a much freer flowing exhaust system. It's not restricted. You're going to need a tune. We do ECU flashes. It's like 200 bucks. Cool. Yep. Fine. Took my EC out, ECU out and sent it to them. Flashed it. No worries. Thing starts right up. Runs great. It's got a high idle. This is my only complaint about the ECU flash. But what that flash did was it gave me, according to TOS, an additional 20 horsepower. Um, better torque curve. This intersection sucks. But it gave me a little bit more power on the top end. They claim 19 horsepower, I think. So at the crank, theoretically, this is making 139, if it everything rings true. Um, I'd like to get on a dyno to test that and see if their claims are, are proper. It was a dyno sheet that you're looking at, but every bike's different. Who knows if it's honest. You know, there's a lot of people out there that aren't honest nowadays, uh, and I'm not saying Toast is one of them. I have no clue, but I would like to test it to find out. Uh, I have no reason to believe that they're being dishonest. It's just the skeptic in me that I really don't believe anything until I can prove it on my bike. Uh, weight savings, horsepower, power numbers, whatever it is. Uh, so with that, you know, 20 more horsepower is not an insignificant amount. Going from 120 to 140 on a 600 is, is a good jump. Um, you know, that's, uh, what, 15, 16%, something like that. That's, that's a significant jump in horsepower. So I, I definitely like that as well. Um, a little lighter, a little bit more power. It's not a bad thing. Uh, I don't know if I could notice it right away, jumping from it. Um, it pulls a little bit in the top end, that's for sure. Let's see here, now I'm hopping onto the highway. Well, as close as you get for a highway around us. Let's see how it sounds. I have with it is I'm traveling along it you know 60 miles an hour right now we're at uh, 5,000 rpm now I am I have gone up three in the back on this bike uh, so a little bit different than the stock gear ratio a little bit quicker off the line quicker quicker coming out of the corners I just dropped the speed of that power band down a little bit doing that which makes it a little bit more usable on the street in my opinion uh, but I shouldn't say on the street. It makes it a little bit usable, more usable coming out of twisty canyons, stuff like that, where you're trying to have some fun but not blow the speed limit out of the water. You know, that's kind of what I wanted to tune it for. Uh, I don't take it to the track yet, but I would like to, to take it to the track. Uh, but now we're sitting here, 5,500 RPM, and it drones like a motherfucker. It drones so bad, and it drones loud. Uh, I don't like wearing earplugs when I'm riding. I like being able to hear everything around me. Um, I think earplugs kind of take take me out of it a little bit. Um, this is a bike that I would recommend that you think about riding with earplugs on. It's loud enough at you know five and a half, six thousand RPM when you're cruising. Um, you know, at 60, 70 miles an hour that. Theoretically, you could cause long-term hearing damage with this. Uh, as a former metal kid and somebody who shot guns their entire life, I already have pretty crap ears. Um, so I really should be wearing earplugs with this, but I don't. It's just not something that I enjoy riding like. So I just, I, I don't. Um, you can try and block it with some neck guards or something like that on your helmet, which will help. but. According to the paper, you should be wearing earplugs. So do what you will with that information. And you can see it just drones and drones and drones. It's terrible to be stuck behind. Uh, I try to take up the back 
of any of the lines that we're in uh, when we're cruising because I feel bad for the person that's behind me. Um, you know, it's uh, it's 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 aggressive. Um, it does sound amazing for a track bike for what this is really designed for. Perfect. Um, although it is so loud that this bike is not allowed on some tracks around here. They have decibel rating or uh, decibel limits of around 92 to 95 decibels at 50 feet. And this is right on that line. Um, so I'm going to try to make a DB killer for it. They actually don't provide one for this exhaust system. Um, however, I think that we could make one. So I'm going to attempt to make one so that I can take it to the track and, and use the full RPM range. Because what they say is, well, you know, if you go up to, you know, 8,000 RPM under the limit, well, you can use up to 8,000 RPM. Well, that's great. It's a 600. It wakes up at 7. Like, it's useless. So, it's a, it's a great exhaust. I love it. It's a little loud for a lot of things. Um, it's very loud in the street. It definitely draws attention. Um, it drones. I, I love it for the track, but for the for the street, I don't recommend buying it. I, I think it's a little too loud. It drones too much. I think the slip-on would be a lot better if you could keep the resonator and the cat. Um, I think that would kill it quite a bit. But for the full exhaust, and again, Toast does not recommend this for the street. This is not what this is for. But you know, we're idiots, so we're gonna use it on the street. But I, I also don't recommend this on the street. It's just, it's just too much. Um, I mean, my buddy's got an R1, and you can hear this thing over it. The other thing, that at least I like about it is I love the looks of it. Um, it looks phenomenal. I'm a big fan of uh, underslung exhausts under the seat. It just tidies the whole bike up. Um, that's part of the reason why you know I have flush mount blinkers on it and the uh, integrated tail lights on the back. That appeals to me. A sleek, smooth bike. I don't have anything sticking out. It's uh, it's proportional. You know, it's equal left and right side. There's no pipe hanging out one or anything like that. It looks good. It looks proportional and it looks sleek. Uh, the pipe itself looks quite aggressive in the back. That's cool. I like that. I like the way it looks. You know, that's why I think going with a slip-on, you kind of get that good part of it without having to deal with the negative. Now, obviously, you're not going to get the additional power from just the slip-on exhaust. But your takeaway is you get an exhaust that is usable and not uh, ringing your ears. While I love it, I think there are better exhausts for the street. Now, if you're looking for a track day exhaust, yeah, I mean, this is perfect. But for the street, there are better options out there. We're finally out of the snow. You can still see some kicking around, I'm sure. But now we've been in three days of pouring rain. So this is the first chance I've had in three days to go out and ride and film. Um, and it's just kind of sprinkling right now. So I took the opportunity, jumped on the bike to go, to go do this. So hopefully this, uh, this becomes a thing. I like the mode of vlogging. I like riding. Oh, uh, now it's really starting to rain. So, oh boy, time to boogie home. Hopefully this becomes a, a more common thing, but we'll have to see. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.